Today we'll be looking at a practical application of matrices, and namely dominance matrices which are used to rank teams or individuals based on past performance, so typically sporting teams. So the scenario we'll be looking at today, uh, based on past performance, Team A defeats Teams B and D, Team B defeats Team D, Team C defeats Teams A and B, and Team D defeats Team C. So the easiest way to understand this situation is to represent it diagrammatically. So we represent A, B, C, and D. And we indicate the relationships between them using arrows. So Team A defeats Team B and also defeats Team D. Now Team B defeats Team D, Team C def defeats Team A and B, and Team D defeats Team C. As you can say, can see it's a fairly complicated situation which is normal in sport. For example, um, Team D is beaten quite often and yet it defeats Team C and Team C defeats Team A which typically defeats Team D. So the fact that uh, a better team doesn't always win is quite normal in sport and this is why dominance matrices are very useful in determining rankings. Now we can take that information and put it into a matrix. So the uh, dominance matrix M we represent like this where um, each defeat or each victory is coded as a 1 or a 0 in the matrix. So this element here, element 1, 2, indicates that team A defeats team B. So that corresponds to that relationship there. So A defeats B. Similarly, this element here, element 4, 3, indicates that team D defeats team C. So that is that relationship. And each of the arrows in the diagram is rep represented in the matrix. Now just a couple of uh, notes on this first order domin dominance matrix. Firstly, it's a square matrix, it must be, uh, because we indicate uh, which teams defeat which other teams, same number of rows, same number of columns. It's a binary situation, so it's either one or it is zero either win or lose. So this does not take into account situations where you have a draw and it doesn't take into account how much each team defeated another team by. It only says whether they won or lost or whether they typically win or typically lose. There's zeros on the leading diagonal, so through there obviously because each team cannot beat itself. And also each element, element AB plus element BA adds to one. So, for example, element 1, 2 plus element 2, 1 equals 1. So element 1, 2 plus element 2, 1 <coughs> adds to 1. Similarly, element 1, 4 and element 4, 1 will add to 1. And that makes sense because if team A defeats team D, then clearly team D hasn't defeated team A. So from our first order dominance matrix, we can arrive at a first order dominance vector V1 simply by adding the elements in each row. <coughs> so 1 plus 1 is 2, etc. And it's easy to interpret. This 2 just means that team A defeats two of the other teams. This 1 means that team B defeats one of the other teams, etc. We can get further information about the relationships between the teams by calculating a second order dominance matrix which is just M squared. So we square our first order dominance matrix to get our second order dominance, dominance matrix M2. Now this 2, element 3, 4, is a 2 and what that means is that team C defeated two teams that defeated team D. So have a think about that. Team C, because it's row 3, defeated two teams that defeated Team D because it's in column 4, which represents Team D. Let's have a look back at our original diagram. So Team C defeated A and B. So Team C defeated Team A and B. And both of those teams defeated Team D. 
So team C defeated A and B, and A and B both defeated team D. So that's what that 2 represents. Let's have a look at another element in this matrix. So this 1, element 1, 4, is a 1. So it means team A defeated one team that defeated team D. So let's have a look at our situation again. So uh, B defeated team D, and team A defeated team B. So that's what that one represents. Now, a second order dominance vector, very simple. We just sum the elements in each row again. And you can see the four for team C means team C is very good at beating teams that beat other teams. So that's what that four represents in the second order dominance vector. Now, of course, we could then uh, find M cubed to find our third order dominance matrix and the th third order dominance vector, etc. Um, and these are used to determine more complex dominance relationships. Um, but we're going to finish with just our second order dominance matrices and vectors. So how do we calculate the final rankings? So the final ranking is going to be some number multiplied by uh, vector 1 plus some number multiplied by vector 2. Now those numbers are determined by the sport administrators. They decide how important is the first order dominance vector and how important is the second order dominance vector. So in this case, we'll uh, let x equal 0 0.7, let y equal 0 0.1 because we decide that the first order dominance vector is much more important in determining the rankings. So 0 0.7 times that vector plus 0.1 times that vector gives us final rankings vector um, that you can see there. And so our teams would be ranked in the order C being the top team, then A, then D, and then B.